God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. For past programs of God's Pure Word of Faith, go to www.spreaker.com. That's Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. In the search box at the top of the page, enter my name, Richard Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N, and click on it. A picture with a cross and God's Pure Word of Faith, Richard Harden, will show up. Click on the picture of the cross. A listing of all the past programs will then show up. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden. Welcome to God's Pure Word of Faith. I'm Richard Harden. I'll be here with you now for the next hour. And I want to talk to you about a subject today that is very, very serious in all of our lives. But... Uh, First, I want to thank the Lord and, again, K98 Talk staff for this great opportunity to share with you God's Word and to discuss subjects like this with you. I'll be talking to you about suicide today. We have so much uh, going on in our society, you know, so many different conflicts and, and changes that are taking place that are you know, um, unknown to us or, you know, has been different than we've ever experienced before. And uh, suicide's on the increase, especially during this time of the year, you know, during holiday seasons and everything, when so many people appear to be so happy and everything. And then uh, the person who's sad or depressed or lonely, something like this, it just makes it worse for them because of what they're going through. But, uh, Scripture says in Proverbs fourteen thirteen, even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. You know, a person who's sad can be around a lot of people, can be going to you know uh, parties, uh, different type parties and meetings and things like this where people are, you know, supposedly having fun and enjoying themselves. And they can talk and laugh and, and share with you and put on the smile, you know, on their face and everything. But it says, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. You don't know what's going on inside the people that you're meeting. Um, the reason I mention that is because, you know, it, we need to be, you know, concerned and, and try to look for, you know, tips and certain things, you know, that might 
give us a clue of the sadness and the things that's happened in people people's lives lately it says even I know uh, times in my life when I was you know very you know uh, lonely or something like this I grew up in a children's home and I left the children's home you know didn't have any family and everything and and I could be around parties like that and everything and be around someone just have real you know uh, happy type actions and smiles and everything but then when everybody left you know, and I was alone again that's just like this verse here even in laughter the heart is sorrowful and the end of the fun or the whatever is still heaviness and then uh, Proverbs 15 13 says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken you know uh, when a person continues in this and, and, and it start not seeing a way out and they start losing hope and losing you know uh, the expectation of, of something better or whatever then uh, Proverbs thirteen twelve says, "Hope deferred maketh the heart sick." Hope deferred, you know, when you start, when a person starts losing their hope, you know, for whatever their uh, situation might be, you know, of getting out of it, of of seeing a way out, um, and having that confidence that something's going to happen, you know, that I'm going to be able to change things. But I want to tell you today, if you're listening and, and you're in that situation now, Proverbs, Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close or nigh to them that have a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. You know, you can always turn to the Lord. It's never too late. Even in the scriptures when um, a man died named Lazarus, uh, he had two sisters, and Jesus was very close to all three of them. And they sent after Jesus, you know, to come. They, uh, the sisters did, to come and do something for, you know, their brother. And uh, he didn't come right then. Uh, in fact, he waited. The uh, tradition in those days was that when a person died the first three days, a spirit hovered around the body and might come back in the body and the person might live again. He waited till that time was past, and they thought it was too late. The, the uh, sisters kind of chastised him when he showed up, you know, four days late, late in their mind. Uh, but Jesus went out and prayed, and um, his father, uh, well, in John 11:41, he says, Father, I know that thou hearest me always, but I say these things because of those standing by, that they might know that thou hast sent me. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. So he prayed, and then uh, God, through the Spirit, answered him and raised Lazarus. Lazarus, their brother, raised him up. Now, see, so like in that situation, for your situation today, whatever you might be uh, feeling like, it is never too late for the Lord to be able to work something out for you. And it says, The Lord is nigh to them that are a broken heart, and save as such a bit of a contrite spirit. Turn to the Lord today with all your heart. Turn to Him and uh, and see what He will do. Give Him an opportunity. You know, I, no one can tell what God might do, but I know that He loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us with the same love that He loved Jesus, and and He will do something for you if you turn to Him all with all your heart. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen says. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Well, people get wrapped up in things, uh, sorrow, broken heart. And uh, like it said in Proverbs thirteen twelve, the hope deferred maketh the heart sick. The sickness of the heart, the broken heart. People's hearts are wrapped up in things of the world, like almost like layers of an onion. You know, you have to peel down an onion layer to layer to finally get to the inner core of the onion. The outside layers of a person's heart are the most important driving influence. And this may appear to change, 
you know, under different circumstances throughout the day, you know, like the work and school and family and other circumstances in your life. There's different parts of your life that seem to be, you know, very important at different times throughout the day or whatever. Now, as long as these personal and social areas are in balance, though, or we feel like we have them under control, you know, we have a pretty good feeling, good, pretty good self-esteem and emotional control and everything. But it's when problems come in the different areas of our lives that continue for periods of time that cause, you know, the troubled mind to, to start feeling hopelessness of some type of reasonable solution. Or, you know, like uh, a loved one dies and, and you know, that adds, you know, all that pressure of loneliness and everything to other areas of your life and like that. And problems just keep building and piling up. Losing a job, an unruly child that's giving you problems, you know, almost daily. A lot of people turn to alcohol and other things like that to handle the stress that's coming into your life. Or maybe drugs, or maybe the alcohol and drugs is what's causing the problems. And and stress and everything. Family members leaving, just walking out or disappointing you in some way or another. All these things piling up. It's like peeling off those outer layers of emotional and physical control, like stripping away, you know, the outside of an onion and you start getting down to the core, the center, you know, where is the stability that the person has, you know, all these different layers that they'd had confidence in, you know, the job and people and like this start falling by the wayside. And the person then is, you know, left with, uh, you know, that inner core of their heart. Just what do they believe? Who are they? What's inside their heart, you know, to, to help them get through these situations and everything? Their strength. Where is it coming from? People get more panicky, you know, as, as, as things in their life that they depended on start slipping away. And, and well, they're going to be like this because in this world, you know, so many ministers and everything, uh, you see on TV and I get to say, well, God's in control and, you know, he's going to do these things, you know. He allows you to go through these things to make you tough or, you know, to teach you things like that. That's not true. First um, John 5.19 says the devil's control this world. And uh, you probably won't ever hear that in church or something like that. But the way the devil gets control is by people disobeying God's word. In uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 10, 11, it gives an example. It says, uh, forgive others lest you give Satan advantage. Now, see, most of us, you know, have lived our lives in such a way that we really haven't put God first in our life in so many areas. And in uh, 1 Peter what is it, 3, 7, says, Husband, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, being joint heirs of grace of life as into the weaker vessel, lest your prayers get hindered. You know, um, if if we're out of fellowship with God and and violating some of these uh, things that God wants us to do, even like in Ephesians four twenty six twenty seven, be angry, sin not, let not sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. See, so many people are allowing the devil to come into their life and have control in different areas, and they don't even realize it. Like you know, if if our ministers aren't teaching it and preaching it and, and telling us the seriousness of these things, these are not just good principles to live by if you choose to. Well, if you want to be a good person, you know, um, you know your wife says this, you do this, you know, there's certain principles of how you're supposed to interact, or your children, you know, how you're supposed to interact with them and discipline them and not discipline them and things like this. Uh, when you look through the scriptures and, and see what God's word says, they're not just good principles. That you know, it it's God and His Word. He and His Word are the same. And when we deny His Word or when we violate His Word, we're turning from God and giving the devil the opening in our lives. And you know, most people in our society today don't even care about God's word. Even you know the 
um, Democratic Party voted God out of the, you know, platform and everything in the last during the elect, last election process, and then they voted three times, and the guy overruled them and and left God in. But anyway, just see, so many of the people in our society don't even care to have anything of God to be a part of their life. Now, but what they don't realize though, if it, it's God's mercy that allows them to even have the next breath, but now us Christians, when you know when we're living like this, we should be obeying God's word because He and His word are the same. When when uh, we say God's has spoken to us, it's God Himself coming to us, forming in our mind patterns of thoughts that cause us to you know say, well, God spoke to me. Or like when we read the scriptures and some scripture you know tells us and gives us instruction on what to do. Well, it's God. In a sense, in his spirit, Jesus says, my words are spirit and life. It's his living words, his life coming off of those pages to us to give us instruction, you know, throughout the daytime as we remember his word. But if we aren't studying his word, see, if we aren't filling ourselves with his word, then there's nothing in us for God to, you know, uh, remind us of during the daytime to give us guidance and instruction. So, so many... Of, of us, you know, are living a life that is rejecting the living Word of God from being that much a part of guiding us throughout the daytime. And as these areas in our life then become more troubled and more troubled, see, Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to seal, kill, and destroy. If, if you've got these doors open in your life, and uh, you've left them open like that, and you just treated God's word as if it's a principle, a uh, good thing to live by if you choose to, something like this. They say the devil has control in your life in so many ways that uh, he's going to keep making things get worse, and it's just going to keep on and keep on. And you need to turn to the Lord and start shutting those doors uh, that are open to the devil, because you know, like in uh, Ephesians, what sixteen. Excuse me, Ephesians 6.16, it says that uh, we have a shield of faith. And if, and if faith means that we're accepting and obeying God's word, see, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, if we accept and obey it. So we can't have a shield of faith just because we're a Christian. Now, we can have a shield of faith if we're obeying his word like this, treating our wives right, you know, uh, uh, he that knoweth do good and doeth not to him in his sin. Well, if we're you know, treating our neighbors and things in the right relationships like this, uh, not holding hate in our heart, asking God to help us forgive that person and, you know, get his spirit back in our heart for that person and for ourselves too. See, we, we've got to be actively daily walking by faith, accepting and obeying God's word to have this shield of faith around us. It says to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But we need to close these doors and, and stop allowing the devil to come in. Now, God in his mercy so many times will help us, though, even when we're still uh, violating his rules because he loves us so much. He'll come in and, and violate his own rules and, and deliver us from situations. I know he did me so many years that I was living in rebellion and everything. And I thought I was a Christian, but I was just you know, ignoring God most of the time, except maybe on Sunday every now and then. But God still in his mercy. He loves us so much that he'll even carry us like this. But the devil has advantage in our lives when we're violating God's word. Now, that is what causes a person's life to just keep going downhill and downhill. They lose a job. Then they, you know, turn to alcohol or something. Then family members leave them and disappoint them. And, and these layers of security that has been built up in their lives and everything fall apart. What is in the core of the heart? Now, is the Spirit of God and His love there to help? Or is it empty? Is the heart empty? See, we're all born on earth without the Spirit of God in our heart. We're born completely separated in our heart from God. And that's what total sin is. Sin is a separation of the heart from God. So, and when we're, uh, when a child is born, they're not necessarily a 
bad creature or something like this, or, you know, uh, somebody that it is going to hate God automatically or somebody's going to love God automatically, they start learning from their mothers and dads and other brothers and sisters as a child grows up. And then when they get out to, you know, grade school and, and start meeting other people, they start getting different influences. And uh, they're taught that maybe their mom and dad wasn't necessarily correct in, you know, and, and their influences from uh, teachers and other children cause people to, you know, change in their beliefs when they're young. And it continues that way throughout our lives that we're influenced by all those around us and what we hear and see on television and things like this. But now, one thing that's common to all of us, though, during that time is that God has promised to bring us to a knowledge of Him. Jesus says, They shall all be taught of God. Now, every man, therefore, that hath heard and learned of God comes to Him. But now, everybody doesn't continue learning from God because of the way they've been brought up by their families and children, you know, or they have uh, already some preconceived ideas of the way God is, and He's not necessarily that way. Like that scripture I said a while ago, uh, 1 John five nineteen, where it says the devil's control this world. Most people preach that God's in control. It's almost like, you know, he's already got everything laid out for us and everything. But you got to understand what that scripture means. God can be in control of your life if you submit to his word. If you submit to him and his word, then he will be in control. He will protect you. His angel will surround you and protect you from harm and things like this. But see, we've got to make the effort to establish our fellowship with God and then walk with Him by faith, by accepting and obeying His Word. It just doesn't come automatic because we receive Christ into our heart. And for those that haven't received Christ in their heart, they're just living on the mercy of God. God is protecting them and in His mercy trying to draw them. In the second uh, chapter of Romans, verse 4, it said, God blesses lost people. He blessed us when we were out in a world of sin, rejecting Him totally. You know, like it, He blesses us to try to draw us to Him. He doesn't beat people up to try to get them to come to Him. But yet, so many people claim that He does, you know, but He doesn't. He, he loves people with a perfect love, and He wants all of us to come to Him. It's not His will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance and, and turn to Him and be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. It's not His will that any should perish, but all come and turn to Him. Well, that's what a person is faced with when they're born on this earth, you know, and, and there comes a time where, you, where God reveals himself to you like in Romans chapter 1 the apostle Paul says we're all without excuse because even even God's glorious creation you know like it you know uh, he speaks to us through that that you know there has to be a God but he what is Titus uh, 2.11 says that the grace of God that brings salvation appeared to all men and he brings his knowledge to us well the people that perish are those who reject the love of the knowledge when uh, like in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 it says you know that uh, the gospel preached to them did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so you can hear the gospel and you can know about God's will and about his word and everything but yet we've got to accept and obey his word by faith and I said Hebrews chapter 2 I meant Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, not being accepted and obeyed in their heart. Now see, as these things in life, these problems come along, uh, loneliness and whatever it might be, you know, uh, losing a job or, or, or just fear, Fear can, you know, uh, lead a lot of people to it because you take, for an example, uh, what's going on in our life today, you know, with the terrorists around the world, uh, there's no area that is safe from from these sudden destructions and things like that that are happening and everything. Uh, but in our life, though, 
that that's causing us, you know, to reach that point of despair and uh, reaching, you know, just becoming desperate and and being depressed and and hopelessness, like the hope deferred maketh the heart sick, having a sick heart and something like this that would cause a person to, to start finally just giving up. If you're at that point today, start seeking the Lord. Turn your heart and life to the Lord and give Him an opportunity to work and see what He will do first. Because there are so many things in life that, you know, none of us have experienced. And when some of these uh, new things happen in our life and, and we're, you might say, shook up because we don't particularly know how to um, respond or, or what we should do. We're in doubt and everything. Well, when you're in doubt like that and not sure what to do, turn to the Lord. In a good example in Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, when King Hezekiah was told that he was surrounded by three armies, excuse me, Josephat, <laughs> King Josephat was told he was surrounded by three armies. He said he said he feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Now, anytime you have fear, fear about the future, that loneliness and everything, you can know that the devil is, is attacking you some way or another because God doesn't give us fear of the future. God doesn't give us that loneliness and everything. He wants to comfort us. In fact, in John chapter 14, he says he's going to send a comforter to us. He said that Jesus said when he left, he was going to send the comforter back. And he said, in that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and the Father's in me, and I in you. And there's no greater comfort than to know that the Spirit of God lives in your heart, and that he's going to help you and lead and guide you regardless of what happens tonight or tomorrow. And he's going to be with you. And that he is with you. Now you may say, well, I've been praying all my life and everything like that, and I've never seen anything like that. Start seeking Him with all your heart. Set yourself to seek the Lord. And don't say you're going to just try it. Because see, just trying it is, well, you're going to try to evaluate it or something like this and see if it's worth it. No. Turn your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, if you love me like He's saying, if you love me as much as you love Jesus, come into my heart. Help me to establish that relationship with you that I, that the Bible says or that these Christians say that you want me to have. Help me to know it's you and not just my imagination. Help me to know that you love me and I'll give my heart and life to you. Give him an opportunity. And then start praying and, and, and asking him things. You know, well, if you're a God, you know, like this and you love me, then start praying about these things and give him an opportunity to answer you in a way that you'll know it's him. Because Jesus says they shall all be taught of God and teaching is a two-way process. Like a, a, an instructor and then a student asks questions back and forth and it's together. And then God wants to teach you. God wants you to be open to him and allow him the opportunity to show you just how much he loves you personally. And that's the only way you'll find out about God because I can sit here and tell you words, but I can't prove to you that God is real. I can't prove to you that God is going to do all these things for you and everything. But I know what he's done for me. I know how he changed my heart and life when I turned to him and I was so desperate and everything. I said, if you're really real, come in and show me. You know, like that. And I don't want, you know, just a good feeling. I don't want somebody to be able to say six months from now that I just had an emotional experience or something. I want to know it's you. If you love me and you... And I said, I'm not going to quit anything. I'm not going to quit smoking. I'm not going to quit drinking. I'm not going to start dressing up and going to church or anything until I know it's you. And if you show me you're real, if you love me, then I'll, I'll quit all these things and serve you. And I haven't served him with, you know, being perfect in no way, you know, as, as much as I should have and everything. But I've tried to live up to that since 1974 when he came into my heart and showed me how real he was. And he turned my heart from so much hate I had in me to, to love for the same people that I had that hate for and everything. Um, he turned me from alcohol and 
other than just not just so I could sit here and tell you that he did it, but but he did it in my heart because he loved me, and and I received it in my heart because you know it just it was such a great change, such a burden was lifted, and I've I've prayed with people since then, you know, uh, telling them about the Lord and everything, and I've heard so many people say that it's such a great thrill to hear somebody after they've prayed and turned to the Lord say, oh, such a burden has been lifted because it is, it, it's like a dark, heavy cloud in your life, you know, just burdening you down, you know, the sins and things in your heart, until He lifts it from you and puts His Spirit in you. Ephesians, excuse me, Ezekiel 36, 26. God says that right now to you out there listening, if, you, if, if you're in that situation, this is what God says he'll do to you. He says, a new heart also will I give you. In Ezekiel 36, 26. The prophet, the prophet was prophesying about what was going to happen in the new covenant and everything between us and God. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I'll give you a heart of flesh, and I'll put my spirit in you. That's what God says he'll do for you today, right now, you know. If you turn to him with all your heart, invite him to come in, forgive your sins, come in to create in you the new heart and a new life. And like in Galatians 4, 6 in the scripture, it says, God, and because your sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Daddy, Father, wherefore you no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ, joint heir with Jesus. You know, you become a child of God when that spirit comes into you. The spirit of Christ, Romans 8 9 says, Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. See, we're born without the spirit of Christ in us, and we have to invite him to come in. And then when he comes in, he creates in us that new heart, a new life. We become a child of God, and it's something you'll you'll wish you had done years and years ago. I've never met a person that received the Spirit of Christ in their heart that didn't wish they had received it sooner. But anyway, I'll take a break now and I'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. For past programs of God's Pure Word of Faith, go to www.spreaker.com. That's Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R dot com. In the search box at the top of the page, enter my name, Richard Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N, and click on it. A picture with a cross and God's pure word of faith, Richard Harden, will show up. Click on the picture of the cross. A listing of all the past programs will then show up. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden. Welcome back. There's one thing I mentioned a while ago about suicide that I want to mention again is stress. Suicide is of the devil. Now, I don't know how in your life the devil's got so much control and you know causing these things to happen that are hurting you so much and that are destroying you so much but you can stop it right now turning to the lord you can you can stop these things 
and they can be completely turned around and God can start walking you out of your situation today. I don't know how, but I know he can, he will, if you'll just turn to him. I think it's in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, you know, he that cometh to God must not only believe that he is, but that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I know that if you diligently seek him with all your heart, he will hear and answer. Because, see, that's his whole desire for all of us, is that we come to him and fellowship with him. And uh, what is it? Isaiah forty three twenty one says, These people I have formed myself, they shall show forth my praise. You know, he's created all of us to be in fellowship with him and to be his extension here on earth and his witness to others and uh, to be his ambassador here. You know, when he teaches us his word and everything to share with others. In the Old Testament, the Jews were supposed to be God's priest on earth. Now, the Levites were the priests to the Jews. You know, there was 12 tribes, and one of them was Levites, and the Levites was a priestly tribe for the Jews. But the whole Jewish nation was supposed to have been God's um, light here on earth, his arm here on earth to reach out across the nations. And even when the new temple was uh, dedicated between God and Solomon, there was a promise in there that if anybody from any country on earth however far it was if anybody came to the temple humbled themselves and called out to God he'd hear and answer them see the temple wasn't just for the Jews it was there was promises there for everybody on earth now the Jews were supposed to be carrying his word and they failed now as Christians we're supposed to be carrying his word and look at our society Christianity is failing in our society to carry the love of God to people the changed heart like I mentioned a while ago in Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put you I'll take away the stony heart out of flesh give you heart flesh and I'll put my spirit in you the new heart to change life is so great and it's not being taught across our nation people are talking about all these theories and philosophies and everything, good principles and everything, but to change heart and change life, that's what the people in Washington the crooks up there, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for satisfaction in their heart. God's created all of our hearts alike. It says in Psalms that all of us, our hearts were formed alike, and they're missing Christ in them that brings that peace and satisfaction, and they're trying to get that peace by power, by getting their way, you know, controlling other people, money. And, and, you know, just on and on like this, they're trying to have these things of the flesh like that to satisfy them. But it's a spiritual condition in their heart that's unsatisfied. And things of the flesh will never satisfy things of the heart. Only Christ can change a heart. Christ, the creating power of God. And uh, God spoke, let there be light. The creating power of God, His Word went forth. The living Word of God, Christ, went forth. And that's the same Christ that spoke to Moses. Hebrews 11.26 says, Moses esteemed the riches of Christ. God's living Word spoken to him. Christ, uh, Moses esteemed the riches of Christ greater than all the wealth of Egypt. See, when, when you know that the living God is alive and true and real, as the Bible says, and that he's personal with you in your life, that's more than money can buy. When when you get sick like that, you know, you go to the doctor, you do all these things and everything like that. One of the greatest scriptures of, you know, uh, health in the Bible is Romans, let's see what it is, 8 or 11. Now, if the spirit of him that raised Christ Jesus from dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ Jesus from dead shall also quicken in your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The same spirit of Christ that raised Jesus totally dead, you know, three days or so, something like that in the grave, the spirit came back and healed every fiber of his body, raised him from the dead. The same spirit that had the power to do that is what lives in us. Colossians says, Christ in us, our hope of glory. God's spirit in us. See, 
Christians are filling hospitals all across our nation because they've holding unforgiveness or they're holding hate or they've been out of fellowship with God. And these curses, these these sicknesses and things, if you look in Deuteronomy chapter 28, all of these sicknesses are on the curses side. God doesn't give us curses. He blesses us to draw us to Him. All the blessings of God uh, on the... Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, none of them include a sickness. There's not a sickness that's a blessing from God to teach you or to instruct you or to make you stronger. No. Now, you can come out of these problems. You can come out of these sicknesses and everything and learn and grow and be stronger, closer to the Lord. But he is not the one that put that on you to cause that. He doesn't teach people by sicknesses and curses. But we have the hospitals just as you know packed with Christians as non-Christians across the nation. That'd be the best health care is for people you know get out God's word and start reading His promises like John seven, uh, John fifteen seven. Jesus said, "If you abide in me and my words abide in you, see, His words abiding in us means we've got to receive His word positively into our heart, to forgive others, to not hate others, you know." He didn't know it do good, doeth it, you know, not it is sin if you don't do good and know to do good. It says, bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. See, living according to God's word is not just reading it and knowing it. It's reading it and receiving his word into your heart. Yeah, like I was saying a while ago, in the, he sends a comforter to us as Christians. Now, Christians can commit suicide. Uh, I've been talking like it's just for lost people, you know, people that haven't received Christ in their heart, something like this. But Christians can be so confused with uh, untruths. We have so many different denominations in our society teaching one thing and, you know, another one teaching opposite and back and forth like this. Christians can be so confused and mixed up and, and be trying to, you know, claim something by faith and what they're using as you know for their faith is you know not God's word if, if faith comes from hearing God's word in his pure word and what is it uh, Proverbs 35 and 6 says every word of God is pure a shield them put their trust in it add thou not to it lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar and the way you get reproved if you're quoting something and claiming a promise and it's not true something different that's been added to or taken from but just because all your people in your denomination or your group believes it that doesn't make it true and God won't back it up that's how you're approved is, is you're basing your confidence in something that's not God's word and anybody with a right mind or half a mind even can tell that there's so many things being taught in our society that's full of error because look at all these different denominations we have. Why would there be so many denominations teaching so many different things if all of them had God's pure word? He wouldn't be, God wouldn't be doing that. Listen to what God uh, says through the Apostle Paul. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, it says, There's one body, one spirit, one faith, one baptism. Now, one faith. See, faith is acceptance and obedience to God's word. If there's one faith, that means there's got to be one set of God's word, you might say. You know, God doesn't tell you one thing and me another, except now when we're seeking his personal calling for our life. Uh, we each have a holy calling that naturally is going to have to tell us different things to lead us to those holy callings. Like uh, in uh, 2 Timothy one nine says, He saved us and called us to a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, created in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, see, everybody's not going to be a preacher. Everybody's not going to be a doctor. Everybody's not going to be, you know, a, a, a something like See, we've got different services for the Lord. So He, he will teach us different things like that to lead us into our personal holy calling. But He's not going to teach us different things about forgiving people. You know, whether we should forgive people or not. He's got, not going to teach us different things about whether uh, the devil's in control of the world or not, or how the devil gets in control, and different things like this. See, things like this, of his character and stuff like that, he's not going to share 
with you one thing and me another. He's going to teach us the same. Now, it says here, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. Now, in Ephesians 4 through 11, uh, 4, verses 11 through 14, it says, And he gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of saints, for the work of the body of Christ, till we come into a unity of the faith. Now, see, he just said there's one faith. We're supposed to be coming into unity at one faith. We're not supposed to have, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, or a couple of hundred different denominational type groups that are, say, I'm of this faith and I'm that faith, you know, different. Well, one faith and a knowledge of the Son of God, the perfect man to measure a stature of fullness of Christ, that says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about in every wind of doctrine. See, with all these different denominations, our society is like children, babes in Christ. They don't know the truth. You know, one says God said this. One says, one says speaking in tongues of the devil. One says speaking in tongues of God is the greatest thing they ever had. And back and forth like this. One's got to be wrong. Possibly both of them wrong. But at least one's got to be wrong because it's right opposite. That shouldn't women shouldn't be teachers and preachers. You know, things like this, you know. It, it, it's so much confusion that there's not one faith in our society. There's hundreds of different faiths. And a lot of people make it like, well, that's great then. Everybody can find something, you know, that'll bless them. No, it's not because you've got to find God's word or it, it's going to be leading you down the road to sickness, to, you know, curses in your life. And, and a lot of people just miss Christ completely in their heart because they talk so many different ways about uh, what you got to do to be bad, I mean, to, to become a Christian and everything. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 4, Paul says, I, brethren, could not speak in you as in spiritual, as in the carnal, even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, not with meat. Hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither are you able now, for you are yet carnal. For wherein there is among you envying, strife, divisions, are you not carnal? And look at our society, the envying, strife, and confusion among the different denominations and religious groups. We're a carnal society. In Christianity. And now listen at verse 4. For while one says, I'm of Paul, another says, I'm of Paulus, are you not carnal? So he's talking about a group of people that has a division, one saying Paul, one saying Apollos. And he calls that society carnal and babes in Christ. What on earth would he think about our society when we have hundreds of differences like that? It just. Our society, our Christian society, is sick. That's all there is to it. It's sick, babes in Christ. Uh, and that's not the way it should be. We should be seeking the one pure word of God, his word of faith. And if you're listening today, don't worry about all these other people. You get your Bible, start seeking the Lord, and and see what he'll do for you personally. See, the... Um, the world's not going to change. The devil's going to keep all these different groups and everything like that all confused and everything as much as possible. And they're just going to walk around with their proud looks and everything, all these PhDs and all these uh, doctorates and divinity and doctors this. You know, when they went to uh, seminaries and everything, they didn't go to seminaries to learn God's pure word. They went to seminaries to learn how to preach and teach the Bible according to to their denominational and seminary belief. Baptist seminaries, students from Baptist seminaries would flunk a final exam from a Catholic seminary. Catholic students would flunk a final exam from a Presbyterian seminary or something like this. See, they're not being taught God's pure word. They're being taught how to interpret and twist the scriptures to match their denominational beliefs. And that's what our society is being based on, is these twisted beliefs of our supposedly spiritual leaders. And that's what, uh, what you and I need to be doing. We need to get the scriptures out ourselves. Seek the Lord. Because like in 1 John 3, let's see, what is it? 1 John 3, 22, it says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. That's in prayer. Whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we obey his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 
Let prayer be your feedback. Prayer is talking and communicating to God. Let prayer and your relationship with God be based on your communicating back and forth with the Lord and the Lord leading you and guiding you and healing you and blessing you. And like this, you know, John fifteen seven. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. See, if His words, we got to be making ourselves available and seeking and studying through His Word to get His Word in us to know those promises. The promises of God come to us through faith, acceptance, and obedience to His Word. So we got to know the promises. Get your scriptures out. Seek the promises, especially right now if you're in a critical state in your life and you're even considering possibly suicide or something like this. Start searching through the scriptures. Now, if you don't know how to or something like that, go down to a Christian bookstore or something and ask them about a concordance that can and give you a, a list of every word that's in the Bible and what scripture it's used in. And, and look in there for the words faith. And look in there for, you know, uh, different problems that you might be concerned with, faith and grace. And, and read all the scriptures that, include the word grace and read all the scriptures that include the word faith and things like this and study and see what those uh, terms mean in our everyday society and you'll find out that most of our spiritual leaders supposed in our country don't even know what they mean there are thousands of preachers all across our nation that teach that people are born with faith just place your faith here and you hear a person a preacher say place your faith that means you know you have faith and then you have the option to just place it where you want to put it place it in Christ or place it in you know alcohol or place it here see they say in faith you can just place where you want to that shows totally that they do not know what faith is because see faith comes from hearing God's word and you accepting and receiving it like if God calls me now to go teach a Sunday school class See, for me to receive his words to faith means I say, yes, Lord, I'll go. I can't place anything anywhere. You don't get anything to place somewhere. Now, you can place your confidence in your wife, your husband, like this, and they can disappoint you. You can place confidence in, you know, a teacher or a policeman or something like this, and they can disappoint you. But not faith. Faith is not something you have until you receive God's word. And you don't place it anywhere. You just accept and obey it, see? So when, when people start talking about placing your faith here and placing your faith there, first thing to think is they do not know what they're talking about. And that's the way it is in so many of these areas in our society where we're supposed to have these leaders that can teach us and like this. And they're not doing it. And you can see the evidence of it is Washington, D.C., the sick society in Washington, D.C., political society and everything, the crooks and all these people, <clears throat> they are the evidence and the fallout of our Christian community's failure. Not Christ's failure now, but of the Christian community. The Christian community and all they're supposedly shouting and screaming and hollering do not have what these people see as something they need. You know, after 9-11, people flocked to the churches. Boy, just flooded the churches. All those congressmen up there stood there with lying faces, singing all those great songs of, of faith and everything like that on, on the, you know, uh, steps of the Capitol and everything, so united. Well, by the next day, they were cheating and lying and stealing again, just like they always do. But uh, all these people that flocked to the churches, Within six weeks, the reports show that more people left the churches after six, the six weeks after 9-11 than actually went to church because of 9-11, because they didn't find their answers. Just the same old thing, you know, uh, God's in control, you know, something good will happen of it, and things like this, and, you know, send your money, you know, and we're going to do this and this. That's all they got out of it. They didn't get the answers to their heart. And the answers to the heart will only come, like in Jeremiah 29, 13, Deuteronomy, where it says, You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Proverbs 1, 33, God's word says, 
but whosoever hearkens to me, whoever heeds me, see, hearkeneth, you hearken and heed God's word, shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. And in Proverbs 3, 25, 26, it says, you know, that uh, be not afraid of the sudden destruction or terror that comes on the wicked. The Lord is your strength. He will not allow your foot to be snared. See, all of God's promises come to us through His living word to us, but we have to receive His word into our heart, and then they work in our heart in the, what we call the work of grace. When we receive God's living word in our heart, it becomes the work of grace in our heart when His Spirit starts moving and strengthening us to change our heart for salvation. We hear God's word that we're a sinner, that we need Christ as you know, our answer. And in our society, so many people don't want to even see things of Christ. Don't even want to hear the word sin. But yet, what it means that we're all sinners is we're all born without the Spirit of God in our heart. That's, that's what sin is, a separation of the heart from God. And uh, we're all born that way. But we have to get out of that sin by turning to the Lord and inviting Him to come into our heart. When He comes into our heart then, creates in us that new heart, a new life, and puts His Spirit in us, we become a child of God. But that doesn't mean that all these promises are going to come alive in our heart because we're a child of God. We, and we have those promises that we can turn to God with, but we've got to know them. We've got to receive them by faith, by accepting His Word and receive them into our heart, and then He will back it up. He will only back up what's in our heart, not what we just kind of know in our head or something like that and uh, live other ways. In Psalms 32, 8, God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. See, he's promised to lead us and guide us, but we've got to have from his word in our heart that we've studied and read in the scriptures to let him, you know, show us his true word. His pure word and back up his pure word to us. That's the evidence that something is God's word or not. Will he back up his word through you? You know, it's like a scientific investigation. When engineers or people, scientists, you know, perform operations and they, they say, well, it must be this way, must be that way, and they do all these experiments and everything, and they say, well, this is it. To complete a scientific investigation, then they've got to be able to take their work hand it to somebody else independently, and the other person come up with the exact same thing. See, that that reproductibility or whatever you want to call it. But I know that if any of you out there are listening right now, I know that it's scientifically true that if you humble yourself right now and say, Lord, please forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Create in me the new heart, the new life, and I commit my life to you. I know you'll receive the new heart, the new life, because God will always back up the heart turning to Him. In uh, 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 16, 17, it says, When the heart of man turns to the Lord, the veil of separation is lifted. The veil between your heart and God is lifted. See, God hears heart language, and He will hear you today if you just turn to Him with all your heart and seek Him. Good day, and God bless you. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at His regular time, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Join with Him, and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. For past programs of God's Pure Word of Faith, go to www.spreaker.com. That's Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. In the search box at the top of the page, enter my name, Richard Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N, and click on it. A picture with a cross and God's pure word of faith, Richard Harden, will show up. Click on the picture of the cross. A listing of all the past programs 
will then show up.